two of them. Well, guys, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all. Welcome to Hearts on Family Farms. Kind of day three of Iowa shotgun deer season. It's a little later start than yesterday or the previous couple days, but we're moving a little slower this morning, so that's why. Just before seven o'clock, we're gonna head down to the car wash and uh, go do our properties today. Haven't done them yet all week. Usually we do them during the weekend, but just like I said before, circumstances prevented that. So now we're gonna see how many we can get today. Car wash is a little busy. So in the mornings, we act to meet at the car wash. Why? I don't know. So we're gonna grab a bite to eat, grab some coffee, bullshit all the groups that we got here, and then go off and go, go start the day. Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome back to Heart Tongue Family Farms. You got the bud man. <clears throat> this is day three of deer season. I caught myself a little cold, so I got a little scratchy voice. But anyway, first two days were a success. Nobody got hurt. Everything was safe. Uh, I think we're up to eight and five is 13. We got a couple of nice ones yesterday. So day three, we are actually heading out to the Heart Tongue Farm. We're gonna go out there and uh, see what we could do out there. Uh, like Ron said earlier, we do do harvesting, not just corn and beans and hay, you do raise cattle and then you actually harvest some deer too. So as you can see, we're starting to gather around. Okay, so we are about to start loading up. We're on private property now, so now we can load up. Okay, so we're pushing this finger down, they're pushing that finger down, and essentially we're gonna do these two, then that one, then that one. So Don, I would say, oh, let's have you walk basically right down the middle of the gully. Okay. James, you go on the left side, like I said, it gets a little wider down there, but just stay even with each other, and just, you, and, you and I will stay three quarters of the way up the hill, you just stay down the middle. Okay. And like I said, it gets thicker, especially at the property line towards the end, but you gotta go through the because they hide in the So Don, you and I can probably go in through here, actually, if you want, be easier. So this is not our property. Our property starts right there. That's our soybean field. But we like to call these the four hollows because there's four hollows that we always hunt. We've hunted this for, dad said 40 years, 42 years he's been hunting this. So we're gonna push this finger down. We got three drivers, one, two, three, three blockers on the end. And the reason why we don't have anybody out in this field or that field. Oh, deer coming in, deer coming in. Straight ahead. Three. Are they all skinheads though? Yeah. Yeah, they, they see us. So we got deer action already. One's a buck. How big? No. <laughs> okay, so there's deer in here. That's a good start. Or a good sign at least. So as I was saying, we don't care if they kick this way because we're going to drive that one next. Don't care if they kick that way because we got that drive going on at the same time. So we're basically going to push this down. We rarely get deer on these first two, maybe one. We sometimes get a couple deer on this next one, but the last one is the honey hole because they all congregate. So we'll see how this goes. But hey, that's a good start. Those deer definitely saw us because they crossed the fence and just stopped and stared right at us. So they're definitely not going to come charging this way because they see us. They're either, more than likely they're going to keep going and kick across, but I haven't seen them yet. There's going to be a couple spots where I'm in a low spot, so I won't be able to see if they kick across. But more than likely they'll just go to the property line, which is roughly 100 yards before our blockers, and then kick out. Man, this gets worse every year. That gully sucks across. It's fresh deer tracks in through here. But that's where there's deer were. You don't get into the thick. This is exactly where the deer are. They'll, they'll hunker down, you'll walk right by them. Two years ago, well, I didn't, they didn't hunker down, but I was walking right through here and I kicked them up. That looks fresh. Because it is fresh. So that's why I like kind of driving because you get to see timber, see how it changes throughout the years. Also, you get to, like I said, just see the deer signs. See what fresh poops here, fresh signs. Blocking's fun because you have a better chance of 
shooting a deer, but I like driving. Not too much because it's very exhausting. It really will remind you of how out of shape you really are. But I like seeing stuff. And because of that, oh my gosh, just about died. Because of that, we had to throw out a lot of our meat because we didn't segregate it. Yes, there's a lot of studies that say that CWD does, does no harm for humans when you consume it, but the lockers that we go to would not process the meat. We took it in there and it had to be destroyed because I forget exactly what happened, but something, something happened at the locker and they had to destroy the meat. It really sucked. Like, that really sucked because we had the most deer that we've ever had over 400 pounds of meat and had to get, had, it had to get destroyed because we uh, had a deer with chronic wasting disease. And I'll explain a little bit more about that or hopefully uh, the DNR person who tests CWD, I wanna get him on camera at some point to have him explain more, but it's a bad disease. That's why we're doing things different this year, but yeah, we'll get into that a little bit more. For now, let's finish up this drive and get more relatively fresh deer poop. Maybe work boots isn't the best to take deer hunting. I got steel toe boots on because that's all I got. Yeah, it's going to be slow going once you cross. Yeah, guys, this absolutely sucks for walking. But this stuff right here is just phenomenal deer habitat, deer cover. There's deer signs everywhere in here. So this was our property, that fence line we crossed back there. So this is my uncle's property, I should say. It's our cornfield up on top. Yeah, so more than likely, so I see the blockers up ahead, drive just about over, but more than likely those deer that we had in here busted out over that way. That's what they always do. Like I said, we don't necessarily drive this drive to kill deer every time, but we mainly do it just like I said, so they all pool going that way. Because that, that final drive is where we, where we slay them. James just said he saw a movement and I heard something right in there. Hey, this drive's not over. You can come on down, James. He was that coyote about sat in your lap. You don't shoot coyotes while you're blocking. Nice job. Ethan, how high up are you? Perfect. Yeah, it, sometimes they run this gauntlet, but nine times out of the ten they kick up that way, which is perfectly fine. We know their strategy. Yeah, nine times out of ten. Oh yeah. yeah. We, we, we're in the deer's head. So I put the camera away because I thought we were done for a little bit, but my dad actually got three shots while I was watching while we were driving up on top to go get the side-by-side. -side. Huh. Nice. Well, now we're going to take the side-by-side -side down because I'm being proactive. I'm going to take it down so we can actually uh, get into places much easier. But now that I'm probably getting the side-by-side, -side, we're not going to see any deer. You heard it here first. Man, I hope my dad has that camera turned on. He had basically a 10-yard shot, if that. There was a buck that came out. He drew up on that one, then moved to the doe, was shot three times right at it. And uh, he might have, I think he missed, but we'll, we'll find out. Well, here they are. We're well, actually blocking right here. Let's see how this goes. Actually, no, Budley didn't miss. It died right here, right off the road. I like it. Good shot, Budley man. Yeah, the three of them came down right here, across the highway. One's laying right there. This isn't our property, but to retrieve a deer, you can go into other people without a gun or anything like that. So that's what I'm doing. I'm gonna go grab it, tag this deer, and drag it down. Looks like a nice fat doe. Yeah, nice doe, Budley man, nice doe. He shot three times at it. Budley once again forgot to turn on his camera. Gosh. But, so just to recap, the deer kind of came right down this hillside. This truck wasn't here, obviously. Right at him, crossed the, crossed the road, bang, 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 done. Went up in here and died back where I grabbed that deer. Did we forget something there, Melski? Packy, what the hell? What would you forget him for? I got this like, what the f is that? 
<laughs> well, I asked him before we started our first game. I said, was Mel at the car wash? And the boy said, oh, somebody was picking him up. Somebody had to go pick him up. Someone was supposed to pick him up. <laughs> yeah, we've got him. <laughs> Sorry, old friend. Uh, a little bit longer. I said, yeah. Uh, I saw four does right away when you guys started. About, uh, came, I so there was a, was two minutes after I pulled up. There was a pile of deer in there then. So, on that first drive, we got one deer. It was that nice doe that my dad shot. And that we didn't have any other shots. So now we're going to do the small hollow, we call it. We'll have three, three, three in the field. And then nine guys pushing us down. Here, Lynn, push it, push it forward. Right, Walk it in. This is the little hollow. We're gonna have two guys on the cell side, and then I'm gonna be up in the field. Remember this, Caleb. So, when you guys are walking up in here, right before it next down, you're gonna climb this hill. You can kind of see there's a low spot, probably 50 yards up. You guys are gonna sit on this side of the low spot. So when we go to block this next on Wednesday, just remember that. Right on that bluff, Caleb, straight ahead of us. You're gonna cover almost to the bottom, straight ahead and kind of up the hill. They're gonna come right at you on that low spot. Shoot them at the bottom of that low spot. They'll run you, they'll run you over if you let them. So you're right there. Nick gonna be up almost to the fence line, so make sure you guys can cover in between. Okay, I am tired. Just hopped up the hill. Got all the blockers set. So now we're gonna be up in this field. I did just drive that timber right there. So now we're gonna be blocking this one as they come down. Okay, so we're starting starting the drive. I'm gonna cover this low spot straight out to me. And I got a driver right there. It's gonna be out in the field a little bit, help me out. Let's shoot him dead, boys. Staring right at me. Definitely sees me. Okay, it's not that big. I'm not gonna shoot it. It's just trying to look at me, figure out who I am. Who or what I am. So it's, I can't move right now, but it's right to the right of that cedar. It's a basket rack. It's a buck, though. Gosh, I hope you guys can see it. I was crouching right now. It'd be harder for me to see the deer, but it'd be harder for the deer to see me. This guy's been staring at me for like a solid minute and a half, two minutes. Get down so he can't see me as well. He's still there though. He's a basket rack, but he's not a bad deer. Probably two and a half year old. Right there. Hope the camera can see it. That's right where he's at. Yeah, so the deer can definitely hear our drivers coming in. That deer can. That's why he doesn't know what to do. Wouldn't be surprised if he busts out. If he does, I'm not going to shoot him. Nice two and a half year old. He's bigger than I originally thought. Still a bass crack, but a really nice two and a half year old. Big bodied deer. So it's really hard to see him, but oh, there he's moving. You can see his white tail. Yep, there he goes. Right by that tree with the leaves on there. He's not booking it, though. There he goes, coming right at the drivers. Hey, you can see his white tail. <laughs> that's cool. So I definitely didn't spook the deer, so that's good. Cause he's just kind of nonchalantly ran back into the timber. Right there's the drivers coming, so they're just about to that finger. So there, something's running through there. When you see a big flock of birds jump out, all in one area, something just crashed through there. So either a driver or more likely a deer. There they go, two of them.
I don't know how the heck it knew to go right there because that's a high spot, it's not a low spot. There it goes. What do you do? There's only two deer. There's somebody. That was on Lynn, Lynn's side. To the other side of the holler. Yeah, it's just one in one hand, two in the other. I could be there, they would ran here. If I'd be here, they would ran there. Just is what it is. Driver just shot twice. Man, drivers had more shots here than blockers. Noise. There's deer in here, so that's good. So now that Scott's moving, I'm gonna start drifting this way. Just to kinda help cover this hillside as best we can. It's not gonna be perfect, but it's gonna do our best. So we've had five groups of shots. Or four. Four or five, I forget. Two at the drivers, two at the blockers. I think it was five groups of shots, three at the blockers. Two, three different type of people shot. They're making a lot of racket over there. Well, at least on the bright side, I saw two deer. <laughs> Didn't get a shot on there, probably 150 yards away. But at least I got to see him. Pulled up on him. Doe, down there. So, this is a signal for a doe if you put that up by your head. This or this, signal for a buck. Ladies gave me a signal, a doe is down there. See what we see, but we're starting to move the blockers this way. Man, those crows have not shut up. So now because I have a lot, I'm on the top of the hill, a lot more skylined, my shooting lanes are a little bit more complex. So basically here to there is a no-go because my blockers are in there. So my shooting lanes are right here. Stop, break, always pointing at something. I wonder what he's pointing at. Something must have got out back there, I'm guessing. Yeah, some, he's got a scope on his so he can look in. But some must have got out back there. I had this, drivers are by uh, 300 yards away from the blockers. If there's not a shot here in the next five minutes, I am going to be shocked. Drive's just about over, so blockers straight ahead of me. Driver, extended driver's right there. That means the driver driver's probably another 100 yards back. Drive is just about over. There's the driver. This one is over. Huh? Those lucky bastards. I know. Hi. Oh. Never mind. It sounded like a driver. Yeah, it sounded like a driver there. Drivers had more shooting on this one than blockers. That's how I was going to wait for them to clear you. And then by the time I got my scope on them, they were already going down over the trail. Yeah. If I saw him earlier, I could have tracked him and maybe lobbed one, but it would have been a lob for me. But I, as soon as I, as soon as I stopped, I had a buck just stare me down for about five minutes. Really? Nice, nice two and a half year old. He was broadside, 75 yards. Probably could have shot, but he was nice, nice tall basket rack. Huh. Yeah, just right because that's so the reason why I was there instead of on the fence line. That dike, probably 100 yards on this side, they love to bust right there. And that's exactly, he stood there, he was going to go, he saw me and then stop, and fiddled around and eventually went that way. But wouldn't surprise, I bet somebody probably would have shot at it. So that could have been one of the drivers shooting. But that's exactly why I wanted all of us out here so that way no more than, because we've had before up here 10 to 20 kick out this way. No, there's only two. They're still shooting on that side, Jesus. No kidding. So our, your blocker's kind of right there kind of on the other side of the gully. I don't think we had any shots on this side except for maybe one on the bottom. But everything else has been on the other side. From my vantage point, there was all but four were drivers. Don! I don't know why he kept going. <laughs> the last block is right here. So this is our time, right? Yep. This whole thing? Yep. Ever since you crossed into that field. Into this field, I should say. This field. Yep. See anything, Steven? Yep. Yeah, I was just talking to him. I mean, 
you stand there. That's a spot where they bust out. They bust out by me. Yeah, I know. Yep. Well, actually, as soon as I got, as soon as I stopped, that dike right there, the new one right on in this field, yeah. buck buck right there was gonna go, saw me, and just stared me down for about five minutes. Yeah. Nice, nice two and a half year old. Wouldn't surprise me if somebody would have shot at it down there. But he was standing there broadside, probably 75 yards or so. We got, uh, what, four shots off? Oh, more than that. Drivers, I think, had probably six or seven. And then I counted probably five for blockers. Good. Yeah, unless they're busting, I don't want to shoot them because, I mean, we. Yeah, you did the right thing because, like I said, if they're not spooked, they'll come right to the blockers 20 yards. Perfect. That's exactly why we're out here. Oh, there's a dead one right there. Dead one? Yeah, there's a dead one straight. One right here on the fence line. Right here, Nick. Straight towards us. Yeah, I got two. Got two? Jesus, killer. Well, that's 30 beers is all. We don't mind free beer. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't think they shot. He must have been pointing away because it sounded like from the other side of the valley. I didn't see him at all. Well, I mean, I was also crested over the hill. I want to get you. <laughs> that was good. No, this is about perfect what we could do on this side. You hold that, Scott, I'm going take this. If you find that tower blind, you will be shooting at something. All right, all right. Uh, one down here. One down over there, sharpshooter. Oh, this might have been the one that I was staring at. Oh, he broke his, broke his antler. This might have been the one that I was staring at. We'll have to look at the GoPro footage and I zoom in, but big body deer. But that has a 30 pack. Where he came from. Died right there. All right, that sucker's tagged. We're starting to gut it. And we'll drag it up the hill, load it onto the mule, and go to the next one. Well, looks like we sound like we got three out of this group here, and they're dragging out. This looks like a 30 pack coming up to me. It is. So, got Don and Ronald and Nick and Caleb dragging that deer up here. So, uh oh. Looks like half the rack came off. I think this was the guy that I was staring at for about five minutes. No, they pulled it off, huh? Yeah, yeah he broke hey. it off. Heading down the hill. Two deer down, potentially three. Yeah. Yep. Nice shooting, killer. Two yeah. shots, two kills. That's all it's done, boys. Hey, I paid those deer to do that. <laughs> uh uh, you're on a play. You ain't paid. <laughs> two nice deer. One nice doe and. Little uh, big bodied six point. Nick's first Iowa buck. Not too shabby. We're just starting out. We got two blockers right there. That would be nice if it wasn't illegal. <laughs> so we are going to push this down. And if I don't hear less than 10 shots, I'll be very disappointed. We better be. I'm hoping so. We got three deer down today. Look at them. Four just came into the drive. Four of them just cave in, right in front of the blockers. There should be a pile of deer in here. Like I said, it's gonna get thick, but go through it, cause they're in here. Don, you can probably actually go, yeah. You can cross the fence here and then go to the left. Yeah, full, so four deer came in from behind us into our drive. Oh, a lot. Never a whole lot. I might just have to shoot at a tree just to set a shot. Oh, you, like I said, you might be able to shoot on this one. Just keep your head on a swivel. Actually, I think the last three times I've driven this, I've gotten a shot. So keep your head on a swivel and keep conscious of where you shoot it at. Because I might shade ahead a little bit just to kind of, especially early. But just stay in line with Don and the rest of those guys best you can. Yeah, we've kicked deer up right here before. Scott Ernst, Steve Schrader. Okay, we're gonna get set up to run my big hollow. I should say my wife's big hollow here. At Hart Tongue Family Farms. So what we're going to do is we'll have two blockers there, two up top, me and two other people that way, one up top, and then uh, we'll push all this down to here. So hopefully we get some blamming going on and harvest some deer. 
a nice long line right here pushing her down nice i mean it's decent cover for them caleb's saying it might be beds here There goes two shots. You heard the one. So yeah, two shots on that left side already. I like it and the drive just got going. Reflex side is on. We're all in a line. I'm shading ahead a little bit. The other guy on the other side shading ahead a little bit. We are ready. So we got those two blockers that are shading ahead of us. Just gonna try and keep keep this deer in here as long as possible. So this drive right here, last year when we did it, saw so many deer, quite literally a metric pile of deer. I think there were 22 shots total out of this drive. Five deer, six, six deer, five deer. So I'm hoping here in a little bit, we'll start to hear some blamming. If we do it right, the deer will stay in the timber. We'll keep them moving. And then towards the end, we'll have them all boxed in, quite literally on all three sides, four sides. There's a shotgun shell. So we'll see how this goes. I'm kind of like for that right there. I think I missed, but I'm gonna go up and check. I saw them coming out right there. I saw them coming right there. They saw me and they took off. Just on a straight B line. So I don't think I hit any, but I'm gonna go check for blood right up in here. So here's their tracks. I don't see any blood. Yeah, I don't think I hit them at all. Like I said, they were it was comfortable shots, it was 75 yards or so. I think I was just over leading. I'll look for a little bit, yeah, here's their tracks. Oh shoot, I didn't have the GoPro recording. Someone just shot, and driver did. So there are three doe that came out, two nice ones and a smaller one in the middle. Shot at that first one four times. I think I was over leading her. Daniel said that you didn't see anything injured and I looked for blood, I found their tracks. Nothing, so I definitely missed. <sighs> Dang it, I mean, that was a tough shot, don't get me wrong. I practiced for that. It's hard to practice for a running deer, but 75 yards is right, right on my number. Tough to judge when they're running that fast. It's a tough one, just at least we got a chance at them. And for those of you guys who don't know, I know some of you guys don't agree with shooting at running deer, but you're driving the whole point is to get the deer moving and like that right there they knew they were boxed in they probably saw those guys on the hill probably saw them knew we were coming at them so they just took a they just bolted so didn't really have a choice do you see them at all yeah there are three of them i missed but they were running at mock jesus at least in brett's we have seven shots on this track <laughs> there are deer in here Hoping those guys get a shot. So if I were to do it over again, I would be shading 75 yards ahead of Caleb. That's what I'm doing right now. Because eventually, once we get closer to our property, I'm actually gonna join Caleb in the woods. But for right now, because they're pretty spread out, I wanna keep these deer in, or at least have a chance when they bust out to shoot at them. And the only way to do that is to shade ahead. At least on the bright side, I take solace in that I was bad enough to miss. I hate wounding deer. I knew exactly where those deer was. I was able to track them. I was able to see fresh tracks. So I knew exactly where to look. There were no blood. I double checked. They were, they were not limping when they were running away. So it did uh, that blocker over there. So at least that was a good miss. Cause I'd rather kill a deer or miss a deer. You never want to wound it because that's just not good. I mean, you can't avoid it at times, but still. And when we do wound it, we do our best and we go all out and we track it. Track it as long as we can until we find it. And really, we haven't had too many wounded deer in the last couple of years. I can think of two. In about five minutes, I'm going to come join you, Caleb. There's a shot. 
think that's us, but it's hard to tell. All right, Caleb, I'm coming in the timber, so you can go go down. It gets really wide on the left side now. Okay. There's the tree stand. No, oh, factory heat. Stuff is nice and thick. Nice and thick. That's why the deer, we always kill deer out of this drive because it is some great cover. Yeah, I, it's getting wide over there. So yeah, I'd say Don, just go to the left side too. Caleb and I can go to the right. So you guys probably couldn't hear him, but they said two big bucks busted through us. Ah, crap. Also all crapping this, this looks fun. The heck am I gonna cross this? Besides sliding on my butt. Yeah, Caleb, I'd go down close to the bottom when you can. Yeah. Some fresh deer tracks in through here. So there are deer in here. There's a shot. There's a shot for somewhere down there. So we're about ready to cross into my dad's property. Just have an army crawl up this thing. That was a lot of fun. Who I'm out of shape. So we're just entering my dad's property right here. So hopefully in about two minutes the fireworks start going. Here's this fence. Unchamber the gun. And I'm gonna slide underneath it. Ah, this is tall enough where I can do this. Even my behemoth butt. Those are some sharp ones. Did you cross the fence? Okay. I don't care who you are, but where you hunt, this has gotta be some of the worst ground to traverse. Not only is it a 15 plus degree side slope, not only am I having to get on my hands and knees multiple times, not only is there multiple rose bushes and prickles everywhere, but I'm also out of shape. Yeah, I know that last one's me, but still. See these trees cut down? Not all of them, but some of them. This is that pasture program that my dad did. Took out all the invasive species of trees, bushes. They're coming in here for the last three years. We're gonna try and make this back to natural prairie or what natural timber would have been 200 years ago. It's pretty sweet. We fence it off so cattle can't get in here. And is it going to be a great habitat? Here's, here's this new fence that they put in. Well, it's what it is, it's not perfect when you got this thick as timber and it's so wide. Just you do your best, it's all you can do. But we weren't in the line and had a deer squirt in between us. Stinks so far, but drive's not over yet. Still got a little bit of time. Not a lot of bit of time, but a little bit. Come on, Bambi. Well, not Bambi, but come on Bambi's mom and dad. Where you at? Someone just said deer in front of us. So there's still deer in here. That's good. It's very good because I would be very disheartened if there weren't like 15 shots. This is fresh. Right there, that's fresh. Whew. I think it kicked up there. thorn bush blocker straight ahead of us that means this drive is just about over that means we haven't had crap for shots this sucks and hey, here's a logging road they're talking about the deer, the deer they saw there's blocker blocker well not near as many fireworks as I was hoping but you know what day in the woods is much better than a day in the office well, they got a deer right there. Hey, that was worth it. One deer's down. Yes. Where are you going, Steve? Yeah. Where are you going? Where am I going? Yeah. Okay, I'll come up and help. 
It's like dried blood right there. Huh. So, Steve was in that tower stand. Scott was right there. I think they each have a deer down. Okay, we just finished up on the big hollow of Jeanette's. There was some more shooting going off over in that distance there, but I don't know what's going on because I was down here at the bottom. So, uh, another good hunt. This thing's still sturdy. I like it. Get all these trees out of here. It's going to be a job for next year. That looks a little bigger than your last one. Came down the road. Couldn't shoot because Scott was down there. Where'd you shoot at? Or like, where did you shoot her? Then I brought my barrel over the tree. Shot right in here. And... Hi, Scott. <laughs> Get that thing out of my face. <laughs> this is a dandy. Not one of my proudest moments here. Oh. You sure did. Oh, yeah. A little couple buttons there. You sure did bump its head? That's so, Scott, when, before we can move this deer, we clean it out and then we have to put a tag on him. So before you move it from the spot of the harvest. So, so there's the tag. Tag's on the foot. Now we can legally transport this tag out of the woods. And we'll put the truck and go down and hang him. Yeah. And then tomorrow we'll end up cleaning this thing. So... Once again, another good hunt because uh, nobody got hurt. Everybody's safe. You could probably grab the rack and drag it by the rack. It might be easier. Oh, Scott says shut up. I didn't have a rack. They grab my, when I shoot my deer, I usually grab them by the rack and drag them out. It's a lot easier, but it is what it is. Well, we are uh, done with this drive. So now we're going to head down to the bottom of the hill. Not sure what everyone's at. But Steve got a doe. Scott got a doe for sure. And I'm not sure what else happened. But in total, I think about 12 to 15 shots. So not horrible, but definitely a lot less than I was expecting. But at least we got two deer out of it. Two deer for sure. Hopefully the guys on the other side got one. Right. Yeah. I figured that was, that was you probably shooting, trying to keep some deer in. Father and son, father and son. So we are going to be doing this little finger. Just gonna be driving it. This is a filler drive. It's about three o'clock right now. It gets dark around 4.30, so we are going to take care of it. So they're gonna drive this finger. It literally just wraps around the hill. It is thick in through there. So I won't be able to say anything, but I'll be able to hear them. Alec is gonna walk all the way back there if he can. And I'm gonna stay about right in here. We got two deer on that last drive. We got one on the first drive and two deer on the second drive. So we have five today, so that's not a bad day by any means. So I think we're getting close to tagging out. We got five deer left. So we are getting close. So we'll see if we get it, if we see anything in this piece. This piece is thick, a lot of cover. Hasn't been pushed in two years. So I, don't, I know I'm not gonna see anything. But we'll see if anybody gets to see anything. <laughs> Those guys sound like they're having fun in there. So the drive started. They're not being quiet, but it's a, it's a bear in there. I'm not gonna judge them. Yeah, that's a that's a drive you don't take a gun in. You just push it. Hopefully they hoping there's something in there. And just like that, drive is over for. Me and Alec, because there's the drivers. So, but we'll uh, slowly walk back and see if they shoot anything, or see if anything kicks out. Nope. Everyone has to experience that drive once. Is that electric or no? No. no. Well, I mean it is, but not right now. Did you fire this beast yet this year? Not yet. Could have blasted that tiny little freaking yearling. <laughs> sitting there looking at me for about three to five minutes at 15 yards in the honey hole. Oui. <clears throat> size of a large dog, I said. Hey, all right, sweetie. Let, let them grow. How many tags we got left then? Five or six. 
enough that we can still put the hammer down tomorrow after starting at probably like eight or nine. All done. Open this gate up. Go drop deer off at the deer shed, shower, put my feet up, edit, edit a video, and go clean some deer again, I'm guessing. 1963 Iowa plate yep. found in that hollow. It's probably a car buried up there. It probably is a car buried up there. That's awesome. Blackout plates before they were cool. Well, we just got the side-by-side uh, -side back home. I'm gonna hop in with James and we are gonna head to the deer shed. Whew, I'm tired. It was a long day. Long day, that last drive really took it out of me. I am exhausted, but we got five deer down, 18 total, that's pretty good. That's a record for the first three days that we've ever done. Last year we had a record for top two. Uh, for the first two days, we had 15 in two days. This year we were 13, but uh, we ended up at 21 last year, but we actually, like I said, we had CWD and yeah, we, had to, we had to throw out a lot of that meat. So we'll get, uh, let's head down to the deer shed and see what we got going on and then we'll close out the video. Okay, we're yeah, back down here at the deer shed. We got that, Nick that cleaning deer. So we're back at done for the day. We're coming yeah, down and we're gonna clean them up. We do have the DNR down here and they do testing on them. They take out this little piece. Okay, we're all down at the deer shed here. We're watching the Purdue Iowa game. Enjoying life to the fullest while we are cleaning deer. Close your, close your eyes if you don't want to see this because it might be gross to some people. But anyway, here's a 30 pack killer. Button buck, button buck. So, <laughs> our, our goal is to clean five deer tonight and then we'll hang five more and clean those maybe tomorrow or Wednesday. We'll see what tomorrow brings. But uh, that's what we're doing, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen.